All right, so my name is Andres, and welcome to the Baking Steel Test Kitchen. Um, today, we're going to do a, like a dough hangout. Uh, I explained, um, yeah, we'll get into flowers. Um, I'm going to talk about dough, our 72-hour dough. We've got a lot of new people here, so I thought it'd be a great time to review. Um, and, and if we have time at the end, I'll make a pizza, and then I can also do a lot of question and answering. So... Um, I'm going to make a dough for you guys in a few minutes. I'm going to take my time doing it. Uh, and then I'll pause and do some Q and a, and then I might try to make a pizza, um, at, towards the end. So I can show you guys how I, my, you know, my process. Um, so let's get right into it and talk about, first of all, equipment. And we will, we'll do a follow up to this with the recording and equipment link. So you'll get all this stuff in the other email. But as far as equipment goes, you know, you need to invest in a digital scale that weighs, because we weigh all of our ingredients by weight. That is almost mandatory because we can't eyeball dough. The hydration uh, level is super important and we need it to be dialed in at like, for this recipe, at 70%. That means there's 70% water to flour. That's the ratio. And once you know these formulas, you can scale the recipe up or down as big as you'd like or as small as you'd like. So if you want to just make four portions of dough or five portions of dough, you can use those, uh, this recipe to do up or down. Um, and we've got currently two versions of our 72 hour dough out there and like the, the internet. Um, I want to show you, you know, and I guess the cold fermentation is that, is that more like the evolution of, of that recipe. Both recipes work awesome, but we find like what I've been doing lately is the cold version or a variant of the cold version. Um, and it just seems to help dial it in to my lifestyle. And, um, or, you know, if you guys have a Friday night pizza night, if you know it's really consistent, then I would recommend following, you know, the steps that we take to help you guys dial it in. So the recipe itself, again, the equipment is a scale you need that. And then we get into, you know, containers and things. These are Cambros. Any kind of bowl is great. I like these because they have a lid. If you don't have a lid, um, you know, plastic wrap is great to proof it. Um, you just want to keep it airtight. Just keep that in mind. Uh, these are Cambros. Again, we'll link to all this stuff for you guys. So as far as flowers go, obviously there's a bazillion different types of flowers. Um, what we have found in using a home oven at 500 degrees, our research and our um, science, which is our, our practice, um, tells us we like to use a bread flour. And so King Arthur comes to mind. It's available almost everywhere. It's a great flower. It's super consistent, whether you be in Massachusetts or California, uh, they have a really great way of putting that together. Um, so super bread flour. And we like bread flour because it's a higher protein content. 13%, um, 12 or 13% seems to be a good range for flowers. So think of that for structure, but think of like your pies and cookies generally made with an all-purpose flour, which has got still has protein in it, but a lower content, um, which definitely works, but not, not great um, for a longer fermentation. So we like to do at least a two or three day fermentation. In order for that to happen, you need to have a high protein, a strong flour, because the glutens in flour, as you guys may have uh, noticed now, begin to break down and, um, when you stretch your dough, you might find yourself getting holes in your dough. Well, that's because the glutens are breaking down. So that's why we like to recommend two or three day ferment with bread flour. It seems to hold up perfectly well um, under those circumstances. All right, so flour, really important. I'm gonna just kind of show you guys what I did. So in our recipe, this is, this is 500 grams of flour. It is um, this flour, salt, water, yeast. There's 350 grams of water. There's 16 grams of sea salt, and I oh, can see this, and there's one gram of active dry yeast. Uh, 
So we do one recipe at a, I mean, one ingredient at a time. First, I dump my, um, after this has all been pre-measured, I dump my salt in and then I whisk it together, right? And then I take my active dry yeast, which is, this is Fleshman's. Um, you can see that it's such a small amount of yeast. It's literally one gram. And I basically whisk that in there as well. And next what I'm gonna do is add my water. For water, I drink filtered water, so I cook with filtered water. So I use filtered water in all my doughs. Um, can I taste the difference? No. However, I still like to use it. It's cleaner. Um, and I just take a, a spatula now, and I literally just kind of mix this stuff all together. And once I get it all somewhat combined into a mass, I remove it from the bowl. Okay. I scrape my bowl clean, which is nice. Once I scrape it clean, my first few times doing this, I might use a timer just to get used to, get it used to kneading it. Um, I like these bench scrapers. These are awesome. Come in really handy. As far as counter, uh, my counter, this is wood, like a wood counter, but obviously granite definitely works. Um, and I measure this, I do this for about two or three minutes. And what I'm doing is I'm just kind of smashing in the flour and the water together. Just so, and I do this because I don't want it to form dry clumps inside of my dough. So I just kind of press it in. And I do this and I keep, you know, I keep scraping underneath it just to make sure I combine all of that flour together. Now I'm just pressing so I don't get any dry. I've done this enough where in the beginning I was getting a lot of dry clumps. That's why I started measuring my time for about two or three minutes. And that seems to do the trick. No, no breaks, just kind of going at it, two or three minutes. And I know this is starting to, um, it's combined really well when it starts to get sticky. And I can see my hands getting a lot stickier now than it was in the beginning. To me, that's like the tell this dough has been somewhat hydrated. And now I can, um, or the flour has been, now I can let it rest. You have all the clumps out of there. I'm gonna put it back into my bowl, just like this. In this case, I've got a lid, I'm gonna cover it. I'm gonna let this rest. Now here's, um, here's where we change the, um, the method just a little bit. Is we say 24 hours at room temperature, and we get this question a lot, so I wanna spend a little time with this. 24 hours at room temp, and then we go to the fridge. We make our balls and we go to the fridge. <clears throat> so what has changed over the last, like, like this next variation of the dough is I keep it in the bulk state for two or three days, 100% of the time. This will sit easily in my fridge. Um, so I do is it is 11 o'clock right now, right? So I'm gonna leave this out until bedtime. So maybe eight or nine o'clock, um, I'm gonna take this container and put it into my fridge and then go to bed um, and cold ferment it. So that's probably um, nine or 10 hours at room temp and then the rest two more days, cold fermentation. And that strategy works super well for me. Originally, we were saying 24 hours at room temp, then ball it up and put it into delis and leave these delis um, in the fridge. What we found was happening is sometimes these delis would overproof in the two or three days, um, which is not the end of the world, but ideally, you don't want your dough to overproof because then it won't, it won't be as vibrant when you make your pizza. So what we did was um, we said, hey, okay, let's, Let's keep it cold until the day of pizza making, and then we can make our dough balls and then let them rest at room temperature for three or four hours, and that dough is gonna be ideal, like perfect. To have two or three days of fermentation, it's not gonna be overproofed, it's gonna be beautiful. Um, 
I hope that makes sense. So that's why we've kind of the, the evolution of the three-day dough, if that makes sense. All right. So let's go to some questions right now. I'm sure you guys got a bunch. I'm going to pause and um, using double. Um, okay. So let, I'm going to just take my time and read these questions as best I can. Uh, if I missed it, don't be afraid to type it back in. I'm working solo today. Um, I have a premium stone. It's got my first baking steel from you. Um, I want to know if I can use cold. Yes, I'll get to that. If we can keep it to dough questions right now, and we'll get into making pizza in just a few minutes. Um, bread flour is almost non-existent. All right, so <clears throat> is it all-purpose flour you can get? This is a great question because a lot of people are having a hard time finding the flours they want. <clears throat> there, there are a couple of um, there's a couple of ingredients you can do. All you can do is get all-purpose flour, for example. Just do a 24-hour ferment. Um, that's ample time. It's going to break the glutens down a little bit. It's going to have a lot of flavor. Not as much as a three-day dough, but 24 hours for all purpose is unique and tasty. Uh, so I highly recommend that. Just one, that's one idea, okay? How much water? So <clears throat> we use 70% hydration, which means if I have 500 grams of flour, I use 70% of that is water. So I want to use 350 grams divided by 500 is 70%. Okay, so if I use 1,000 grams, um, that's an easy one because it's doubling, but I would do 70% of 1,000, which would be 700 grams. Okay, so it's, and if you could do that, I can't do the math in my head for 1,200 grams, it'd be, um, uh, let me get a calculator here. So let's say I want to use, 1,200 grams of flour times 0. 0.7, it's 840 grams of water. That's it. So you can really scale this up, but just keep it 70% at all times. And if you want to do the quick math on how to know how much dough to make, you just add all of the, the four ingredients up. So, for example, I just made 500 grams of flour. 350 grams of water, 16 grams of salt, and one gram of yeast. So I would just add that up. So it's ready. It's 500 plus 350 plus 16 plus one. 867 grams of dough. That's what this is going to make. Um, it's not going to change by fermenting. It doesn't change. It doesn't go up or down. doesn't get reduced or I don't add. So it's 860 grams of dough. If I like to do, if I want to make four pizzas out of that, so it's 867 divided by four, each of my doughs would be about 216 grams. I can make them three or make them bigger. Um, so you see, I can just do that math. Once you figure out what your lifestyle, like every Friday night, I make three pizzas. So I need X amount of dough right? And then work backwards from there. Really simple once you get it and you can dial it in to make the exact, maybe you want to always make one extra dough or two. Um, really fun. Uh, sorry, was it the 24 hours for eight? Yes. So if I'm only doing it, if I can only get all purpose flour, I'm going to use um, only a 24 hour ferment. Plenty of time. The amount of yeast in an Eighth of a teaspoon. Okay, so let's let's review that really quick. Those those foil packages, if you can find them now, um, I don't have one here. Are uh, two and a quarter teaspoons. You know the ones I'm talking about. You rip open, you put it back in your fridge. Those versions, two and a quarter teaspoons or nine grams. Um, in this batch of dough, we just used one gram or one ninth of that package. So we really. Don't use a lot of yeast because we're fermenting over a period of time. So you don't need a lot. I hope that answers that. Um, let the dough ferment 24 hours. Does that mean still at room temperature? Yes. I, if I'm only doing a 24 hour ferment, I'm going to do half at room temp, the first half, the second half at cold. And by the way, one of the added benefits of doing a cold ferment is that dough, which is super sticky, becomes less sticky when it's cold. So it's easier to handle and make dough balls, which I'll do in just a minute, okay? Um, yeah, double zero flour. A lot of people love double zero flour. 
Some people prefer it over bread flour. So in my case, I prefer bread flour. We're using a product from Central Milling. It's, um, it's a high gluten, high mountain organic flour, which I just love. Um, and we're gonna link, um, we'll send you guys an email tomorrow if you're on our email list with all the links to all the products that we use. Instant yeast instead of dry active, yes. Just substitute one for one. Um, it's close enough. I think there's a, a different um, conversion than that, but that's pretty close. Um, wild yeast starter instead of commercial yeast in the fridge now. Any suggestions though? Nope, just use this. Um, if you're using sourdough, we covered this a few weeks ago. Just, and I like to use 20% of sourdough. So we move um, 50 grams of flour and 50 grams of water. Um, and put in 100 grams of starter. That kind of keeps it equal. That works really well. No, when we would die, divide, and yeah. So let's, we're gonna get into that in just one second. Um, the percentage of salt is 3.2% and the percentage of yeast is like 0.02%. So it's a very small amount. Awesome. Oh, great, nice job. Denise, awesome. All right, let me let's go. Let's let's fast forward a little bit. It's it's the day of making pizza. Let's hypothetically say this has been proofing in the fridge for three days. It would basically double in size. Um, I'm going to make a dough ball for you guys now because this is a really important step. Uh, I want to um, show you guys. Let's say the day of pizza making. Now now is the time. And if, by the way, if you're buying store bought dough do this step right here, it will improve it like dramatically. It'll really help it, okay? Um, but let's take one portion out of the, um, pretend I'm taking it out of here, please. And then always flour up your workstation and take the dough out, okay? Place it here. And I coat both sides with flour. Okay, I put flour on my hands. This thing's sticky, so um, this makes it a little bit easier to handle. So flour it up both ways, and we literally just pick it up and fold it in half. And I follow this, this um, technique over like about 15 or 20 times. So fold it in half, and then I turn, I grab each side, and I lightly press it in, lightly, like very, very lightly, and then close it again. And I just follow the same sequence. My hands just mirror each other and close. Each time I do this, I'm getting a little bit of the air out and I'm making a tighter skin on the back. And I just keep following the same pattern over and over again. Careful not to rip, not to rip. I'm being gentle. It's not a stress ball. And you can see my skin is starting to form tighter and tighter. If you guys can see this, it looks like a baby's butt, right? And turn, close and turn. Eventually, after about 15 times, I'm gonna have a nice tight ball here. I'm gonna put this in my, in my um, palm, the smooth side, and just kind of close it up, right? Forming this gorgeous dough ball. Really simple. And I place this um, seam side down into you know, a deli, one of these. I'll use this here today for example. So place it down, um, cover it up, let this rest for three or four hours, and then we'll make pizza, okay? It's gotta rest though. If you're buying store-bought dough, the same principle. Let it rest in this state, okay? Um, that takes practice, but also re realize you wanna be gentle. Don't wanna be aggressive. Let me get to some more questions here. Um, if you're gonna freeze the dough, now is the time. I just made the dough balls. I wanna freeze it at this stage right here before it starts to proof anymore. Just freeze it. So when it comes out, it'll start to rise. Up to about 30 days max. Does the dough ball rest? Yes. If I'm baking this off today, I'm gonna to let it rest today. Um, in fact, I'm gonna bake this off probably around three o'clock today. I'm just gonna let it rest in here all day and then I'll take it out and it'll be, it'll. Press out beautifully. Um, when do you leave the dough out for 12 hours? Yes, it almost will double in size. The, the different times of years uh, of the year, 
it will rise at different levels. Um, it's warm right now. I will keep the kitchen in here warm or cool when I'm not in here. Um, so, but yeah, it'll, it'll rise and it'll rise enough. How many dough balls do you get out of that? So this one I made, I'm going to get three or four, depending on the size. All right. Does that answer those questions? You guys want to make a pizza together? What are your thoughts on that? I need to get a, a spoon. One sec, let me just grab a spoon. You guys hungry? I am. Um, let's make a pizza. I'm going to show you guys. Um, we're going to just jump three or four hours into the future and make a pizza. I've already got some dough I took out of the fridge. Um, these are like seven day doughs. I had a couple of extra from last week that are. Um, be packed with flavor, but it's not going to be as vibrant, but it's going to be awesome. It's going to really be great. Um, I'm going to make just a plain cheese pizza. I'll show you guys my technique, show you everything I did to, um, this dough has been removed from the fridge. It was cold. So it's been now at room temperature for maybe an hour, an hour and a half. It's starting to proof again, uh, which is awesome. Same time, I've got my oven. I've got my baking steel on the top rack. I've got a baking steel on the bottom rack. I am doing a, a little, I've been working on this new um, system for my ovens to trick my oven out a little bit. I like to use the broiler. I've been preheating this for one hour or maybe an hour and a half at 450 to 475. So it's not super hot. Um, because when I turn the broil on, the broiler tends to go on a little bit faster than if the oven was scorching hot. Because, because these electric ovens have some um, like intelligence almost, they know they're, they're hot, they won't, the broiler won't kick in if the oven's too hot. It waits till it cools, so it takes long. So by tricking it out, I only blast it at 450, and then when I put the broiler on, it tends to kick on faster. That's my secret for this oven. Might work for you guys at home too, um, not sure. But really, um, I'm gonna go back to my screen down here. I still have the same batch of flour from earlier. You can see the bubbles in this thing. All right, so flour goes down. This dough just literally gravity takes it out. Boom, just like that. All right, so I've got the dough. One tool we need to have also, I should have did this first, my pizza peel. I literally take some flour. This is really important, by the way. Flour and dust it around. Dust the flour on there, okay? Think of that as my ball bearings. Okay, so I've got this done. I'm gonna set this aside for a second. We'll get back to the dough. All right, so now, the dough. I don't want it to get stuck, so I flip it over. Both sides get some flour on it now, okay? And now you can see I've got these incredible bubbles. I'm gonna lightly just press with my fingers to help this thing expand. I'm picking it up from time to time so it doesn't get stuck, and this lightly press. Because this dough has been fermenting for two or three days, it is super supple, super um, light, uh, and it's gonna, it's gonna stretch really easy. You pick my, this clean up a little bit. All I'm doing is working my fingers just like this around the perimeter. As I do that, you can see it's starting to expand already. Super easy. Gravity is doing all of the work, okay? And the, if I can work consistently, I'll get a pretty consistent stretch. Then I just place this onto my pizza peel. Let me scrape up here. If you guys can see this, I got these incredible bubbles, totally unique. I'm gonna leave them. I'm gonna switch my oven to broil, okay? And before I do anything, I'm gonna give this pizza a little shake, okay? It's sliding like a hockey puck. That's really important, okay? Because this dough is super wet. I'm gonna put my sauce on, which are crushed tomatoes, just crushed tomatoes here and sea salt. About two spoons and I kind of distribute it close to the edge, but not over the edge. Just like life. My favorite quote when I make pizza. Um, stretch it out, boom. 
Now for my cheese, I'm using two different cheeses. I have a fresh mozzarella and I have a, a fontina, okay? And I'm gonna use my Wonder Shredder. Actually, before I do that, I'm gonna give us another slide again. Make sure it's sliding like a hockey puck. It feels good, sliding. And now I'm gonna add my cheese. Just grind it up. I like to grate it right on top, distribute it. The mantra we use is less is more. So keep that in mind. I break up the fresh mozzarella in my hand, small chunks. Okay. That's it. Got my cheese on there. I've got my um, sauce on there. I'm going to give it a shake again. And look, it's still sliding like a hockey puck. If it wasn't sliding, I would just pick up a corner and throw some, throw some flour underneath it. Other than that, this thing's ready to rip. Okay, so now I'm going to check my oven. And guess what? My broiler is already on. So I'm going to launch. The back of this peel goes to the back of this steel, and I smoothly just back up. Watch. Back of the peel back here. Face this forward, backward motion. Take a deep breath. It's, um, it's, it's, it's very zen, okay? You don't want to be, like, panicking. Very smoothly, just kind of shake it back and forth. It'll slide right off. Just make sure it's always loose like a hockey puck. Okay? Hope that helps. Let, oh, and then most importantly, I've got to put my broiler on, uh, my timer on, because I'm going to put on for like a minute and a half. I already probably used 30 seconds. Um, the broiler's on, which means direct heat from above, and I need to time it, because if I don't, I'm going to burn it. So that's critical. Any questions so far? Great question on the wood peel or metal peel. Um, the dough is really wet. We find wood to be much easier to launch. It's um, not, it doesn't get as stuck, okay? Um, my, after the pre for 475, how long do you leave the broiler on before putting the pizza in? Also, is the broiler on low? So the broiler's on high. I tend to launch it almost immediately as soon as I, I see that broiler kick in. Just because the broiler is not going to stick out easily. It's still on right now, which is great. If I can get that broiler on for a good minute and a half, I know I've kind of hit the sweet spot. So just keep, you know, bird dog your oven. See how long it stays on for. Um, let's see. How do you clean the pizza peel? I use a bench scraper and I use um, soap. Oh, not even soap and water, just water. And I scrape it clean. And then make sure you dry it afterward because it will warp if you don't. Um, so just dry it. That's critical. Just like the steel. How do you use um, preform and bigger poolish with your dough? Yeah, we, we did use, we talked about that a little bit. Substitute in 20% of your um, starter into the recipe. That works great. I'm, uh, and I can smell that thing. It's, it's, I can smell it. So I'm going to get my towel here. Let's see what we got here so far. So this is like two minutes in. I'm gonna, I'm gonna show you guys a quick top here. Look at that. You can see the bubbles. Probably should have popped it. I still think it's cool. Um, underneath, almost there, after two minutes only, or just about two minutes, I'm gonna turn the broiler off. And it's already off, okay? And put my timer on again for maybe 90 more seconds. And then that'll be about a three and a half minute pizza, which is really the baking steel working its magic. That heat is just, you can see the bottom's almost done already. That heat's just blasting into that dough super fast, creating like a, an oven spring, um, incredible color on top. The flavor in that dough is gonna be unreal. I wish you guys could come over and taste it with me. Um, it's awesome. Anyway, let's get back to questions. Parchment paper is a great idea because it's less mess inside your oven. However, I would not use the broiler with the parchment because the paper's gonna catch on fire. Believe me, I've been there, it sucks. It makes nice pictures though. Um, I, so good question on the, on the I use flour. I ran out of semolina flour. A lot of times I like a combination of flour and semolina flour. Today I just use flour. 
I don't love cornmeal because cornmeal tends to burn a little bit too easy. So we stay away from that. Um, do I oil the, the dough when I put it into my delis? I actually oil, oil the delis. I've got a little bit of olive oil on the bottom and the sides just to help this, um, help that dough come out a lot easier. If you make a second pizza right away, do you, ah, great question. Um, let's say I have one steel and um, right, there's, there's our nine seconds. Let me get back to that in one second. Let's take a look at this here first. Grab my peel. I'm thinking we're about done. And I would just use my fingers, slide it back off, blow with my oven. Actually, I like to wipe my steel clean in between, especially when I'm doing multiple pizzas. This works fast. Okay? Let's take a look at this pizza here. You guys can see this. Um, I didn't, I have said I'm not going to pop the bubble. This is what happens, right? Still think it's cool. Underneath, we've got a nice crust. Um, I can pick this dough up. You can see my pizza. You can see underneath. It's awesome. Really well cooked. Really nice bubbles. Um, pretty, pretty awesome for three minutes. Could I have cooked it a little bit longer? Maybe, but it's going to taste incredible. Um, I'm probably going to feed my kids lunch. I'll surprise them with a little pizza um, in a few minutes. I can just reheat this. So that's a good point. I'm not going to... Um, Serve this right away. So I'm going to throw it back in the oven in about, probably about 15 minutes. Just heat it up again, and then I'll slice it. So once you slice it, it becomes difficult to preheat. Let's get to some more questions here. Um, do I need to season the baking steel? Yes. Yeah, so our, we season the steel. It's ready to rock and roll out of the box for you. However, if you want this thing to last a long time, and you can keep it in your oven, by the way, Take it out to clean it. After you clean it, wipe a little bit of like canola oil, flaxseed oil, avocado oil, coconut oil, really small, small film. Like I like wipe it in and then I try to wipe it out. And then just put it back in your oven. Next time you preheat your oven, it'll kind of season itself. And add layers in the beginning because the more, think of it like a force field. You're adding a force field to that steel, which makes it, you know, great. And it'll make it last forever. Um, so if I'm going to make a second pizza right away, so I remove this, the oven is back on 450. If I was doing multiples, I would probably just leave, um, I would go back to boil right when I remove that, make my pizza and fire it off in there and just keep, just keep going. I, I just like to give my steel, you know, a couple of minutes in between pizzas just to kind of rebound back. And it rebounds really fast. Unlike a pizza stone, the steel rebounds really fast. But give it a couple of minutes in between. Or if you really want to get crazy and make, you know, multiple pizzas, two steels. One on the bottom rack, one on the top rack. And you can keep cycling. After two minutes, I would move one down to the bottom steel. So I launch up here. After two minutes, I'm moving that to the bottom. And then I'm actually loading another one right away onto the top. I'm actually going to leave the broiler on for that. And I can literally make 25 pieces in an hour with one oven, which is crazy fast with two steels. So that is, if you make a lot of pizza at home in a session, two steels is a really great option for you. Um, I would put the steel on, I have a steel and a stone. Um, I, I don't know what to say to that. I don't like stones, but it will, I guess, keep, maybe keep it on the bottom just to kind of keep your next pizza warm as you're putting a new one on top. So you can kind of keep that cycle going. It just won't do as much on the bottom as far as um, maybe you do three minutes on the top and one minute on the bottom. Won't keep it as crispy. Um, yes, you can put the steel on a grill be mindful that outdoor ovens aren't pizza ovens, so you don't want your steel to get too hot. Um, we like to keep around 350 to 400. Now make sure, um, I want to show you this, someone's asking to see this again. Keep that bottom from burning too much, too fast. Isn't that beautiful? Now, by the way, I can add some basil to this if I'd like. Um, here, that was bubble, aren't they cool? Awesome. All right, any more questions, you guys? 
I hope that's um I hope that helps. And we're gonna follow up with everyone who's here or on our mailing list with all of the resources where we get everything from tomatoes to flour to bench scrapers to scales um, on that email list. We'll send you the link so you guys can take a look at them if you need it. Um, should we be limiting the oven at 450 with the steel? I would, if you're gonna use the broiler, just be mindful when you turn it on, how long it takes to kick in. I know now I've made enough pizzas in this oven that it will not kick in when the oven's at 550. So what I do is I trick it. I only have it at 450 because ultimately I want to use the broiler, okay? And for me to use the broiler, I need, I want it right away too. I don't want to wait here for 10 minutes. So I have found it kicks on right away when the oven's only at 450. Um, that's a great question, Kevin. Why not make it out of stainless steel? Well, I'm a steel guy, so when I tried, I, I tried stainless. Um, and I was not happy with the results. So yeah, you're gonna, not gonna have as much maintenance. However, it works pretty much like a pizza stone. The steel, stainless steel is a little bit softer. So with all that extra cost in that metal, the results are not nearly as good as the steel. Not even close. That's why. Uh, anybody else have any questions? Yeah, if you guys have any, you know, obviously always email me, Andres at Baking Steel or um, info or Craig at Baking Steel or just info at Baking Steel. We'd love to help you guys. If you have any questions at all, any requests for more Zooms, just let us know. We'll, um, we'll be here for you. You're, okay, good question here. If my oven is not as smart and the broil came on, would you bake it at five or 550? I, if my gas oven over here, by the way, is not as smart. I leave the broiler on all the time. And I just know I can only cook it for 90 seconds, 90 seconds with the broiler on. So I love the broiler. If I can get it on all the time, I'm using it. Grilling with the steel. Yeah, put it on the grill. Totally flat top. Smash burgers. Uh, we got a whole bunch of recipes. Steaks. Breakfast. Bacon and eggs. You name it. Talk about the process of using AP flour. Thank you, Jen. Um, just remember, if you're using our 72-hour dough with all purpose, just do 24 hours, not 72. That's that simple. Yeah, we're gonna we're gonna record this. It's being recorded now, and we will um, throw it back on our YouTube channel uh, this afternoon, maybe tomorrow, and on Facebook. Yes. My broiler only goes on when the oven door is open. Yeah, just keep your oven door cracked. Some people will put, you know, stick a spoon in just to kind of keep it ajar. Um, that seems to work too. Um, if the, yeah, if you only have two settings on your broiler, go with the highest one. Correct. My, that's my plan too. Awesome, you guys. Well, thank you. Again, um, if I forgot anybody's questions, please email me. Um, you guys are awesome. Thank you. I'll leave you guys with this. Beautiful pizza, it's gorgeous. Can't wait to eat it. <laughs> um, I'll see you guys later, okay? Thank you guys. Thank you.